Hello, this is Mike Queen from WinCNC, and today I'm going to work a little with the outline scan. It's a digitizing program for outlines or edge scanning. In order to use this, you have to have the probe enabled. You've got to have a digitizing probe. The probe has to be enabled, and to check that, you go to help and about and it would have to be enabled uh, side probe and up down probe. Mine's all enabled uh, because I have a totally unlocked key but for you to be able to use this you would have to at least have side probe and up down probe enabled in your software. Now back to this. I go file digitize, outline, and the first thing I want to do is set it so that I have a DXF file. So this creates an outline around whatever I'm going to be working with. Next thing I want to look at, I'll skip this for right now. I will look at my scan increment. This is how big of an increment will be between points. Um, this thing does not work on exact increments. It will try to get a 0.1 increment here, but if it hits something before it moves 0.1, it takes that point. So it's trying to get 0.1, but there's a possibility, a good chance, that it won't get 0.1 on the resolution. The scan feed rate. I never run this thing over 30 inches per minute when I'm scanning because it affects the accuracy of the scan. I normally run it somewhere between 15 and 30 depending on how closely I want it to follow the line. The scan size, I always do 360 degrees. This was adapted from a surfboard scanning software so I leave the 180 degrees here in case those guys ever want to use it they only scan half of their surfboard. But for me, I always want to do 360 degree scan. Uh, I have the choice of scanning starting in an X positive direction or a an X negative direction. And that would be here with the probe. X positive would be in that direction. X negative would be in that direction. That's only on the start because this thing walks around parts. So if it's scanning in positive direction one time for it to loop all the way around it's probably going to be going in negative direction before it's over with. The same thing for Y scan direction. I can and Y scan direction is is the starting direction. So it either starts away from the part and moves into it like this or it starts at the back of the part and move into it like toward it like this. And I will do something on that in a later video. The initial Y move distance, that's how far the probe will move before it just aborts when it's moving into the material. I like to set it at a quarter of an inch because if the probe is not connected right or something like that, it will only move a quarter of an inch before it stops. And therefore, if it doesn't get a signal and keeps on moving, a quarter of an inch is not going to break my probe. Uh, probe settings. The degrees to back off on a stuck probe. I always set that at 90 degrees. In other words, a quarter of a turn. This thing works on arcs. And it works like this. And, and that will be seen in a later video also. I believe I also have another video or two up there of the probe scanning, so you can get an idea from that. The probe stylus diameter, and this isn't quite right. It's actually a two millimeter ball, and I'm going to quickly go ahead and decide, determine what that probe si tip size, and that's this red ball right here on the end of this. See the ball on the end? That's actually two millimeters.
Well, I don't work in millimeters in this. I work in inches. And so therefore, I want to measure this in inches. So I can take two millimeters, and I divide that by 25.4, and I get this number. Well, that's a big number. So 0 0.0787 would work. So I'll close that. I'll come back over here, open the outline scan back up, 7, 8, 7, and that's OK. Now, my probe trigger adjustments, that's actually the distance that the probe moves after it comes in contact with something before it actually triggers on the screen. And here you can see that I've got a probe indicator that tells me when the probe has actually triggered. So that's part of what I'm going to do here now. I'm going to go in and actually determine how many thousandths of an inch my probe moves before it triggers. I've got it set at 10 thousandths, which is fairly close, but I think it might not be exactly accurate. So I'm going to go ahead and cancel this, and that's what I'm going to work on right now. So you can see here that I've got quite a space here. That's half an inch or so between my probe stylus and the material that I'm going to butt up against in order to check this. So in order to do this, I want to make sure that I'm on slow. I don't want to crash into anything because the probe's not enabled. And I want to move over until I'm right up against the material, but not pushing the probe sideways. So I'm getting really close there. Still see a little daylight there. Still can, I believe. And now what I want to do is go to thousandths of an inch. I want to make sure I don't do an inch or even a tenth of an inch. A tenth of an inch wouldn't damage my probe, but if I clicked on one inch and hit X negative, it could damage my probe. So I want to make sure that I'm on one thousandth of an inch. So now I'm going to move a thousandth of an inch at a time until there is no daylight showing between the probe and the material. So, one thousandth, and I believe that I'm against the material now. So, now I could leave this here and just count how many thousandths over from 4.351 I'm going. But it's easier just to set a local zero there by typing G92X0 and hitting Enter. And now I've got a zero there. And however many thousandths I move over before this indicator changes, that's the number that would go in that box. Because this is the amount of deflection that the probe takes in order to trigger it. So I'm going to start counting 1,000, 2,000, 3,000, and we're watching this indicator right here. And it says that we move 6,000. So I know that I can put 6,000 in that box in This box, I can change this from 10 to 6 thousandths, and it would be a much more accurate scan. Now, I'm going to go ahead and, and do this. I, d I don't have this set up so that I can just save these values without trying to run a scan. So, what I'm going to do is hit cancel here. I'm going to go back to slow. I'm going to move over away from my material. And then I'm going to fool the software into thinking that I'm doing a scan so that it will save those values. So I'm going to go back to here, outline. 
I'm going to go 8, 7, and I'm going to go 6 thousandths. Now I come up here and I choose Browse and I'll just go uh, test. And click save. And now it knows where I want to save the file. Uh, I'll click run. The machine starts moving, but now I'll, uh, I'll pause it and abort it. And now, the next time I come in here, my settings have changed and they're saved. So this only saves to the one thousandth of an inch. So uh, 0, 7, 8, 7, it rounded up. So instead of 7, 8, it's 7, 9. Um, still very close to being correct. Uh, it's one ten thousandth bigger or whatever. So that's how I would set the probe. So that the diameter of the ball is correct on the end and the amount of deflection that it takes to trigger the probe to make this indicator go off. And for this video I think that's all I'm going to do Thank you, and watch for other videos on this. I'm going to do one of an entire scan of something. It will be several minutes long, maybe 25 or 30 minutes long. Um, maybe I will cut through some of the steps once you see how it's going to work. But it's kind of important to see how you can put DXF files together to generate something in Aspire or Repower Pro and I want to get a video made of that. Thanks for watching and have a good day.